generally when you go to a physician they're answering two basic questions are they detecting disease which is often a screening procedure like mammography and the other one is a diagnosis question that is there's something going on is this a problem or not and so what we're going to deal with mostly is the diagnostic question they would sense an abnormality and they would try to figure out whether it's a dangerous condition or not. What's happened in recent, uh, in recent years is a lot of new information about how the body uh, controls cancer growth has come to uh, be understood. Uh, we understood from a long time ago that generally the way uh, cancer begins is as we go through life our uh, DNA starts to accumulate mistakes and these mistakes turn on oncogenes and these oncogenes produce uncontrolled growth of the cells. People have known that for a long time. What's new and what they haven't known till recently is that the microenvironment around these cells or the epigenetic factors, how important they are, and that generally determines whether uh, cells actually develop into a dangerous tumor or not. So what, what happens, so the, the epigenetic factors that we're interested in are generally biochemistry surrounding a cell, and also, surprisingly for some, uh, the biomechanical environment surrounding a cell. So you can think of cells like children, and they're in, on a playground, which are like monkey bars, okay? And the monkey bars are the extracellular matrix that the cells crawl through on their way to, to their job. And the hands on the, on the cells uh, we can think of them as sensors. Not only are they grabbing on, but they're, they're feeling the, the environment that they're, uh, that they're in. And what happens is if this environment is normal, then the cells are quite happy. They're all stretched out on their, on their little matrix and they're, they're feeling quite good about things and they're in homeostasis. Um, if this, the environment's too soft and they actually start to ball up and they, they die, and that's because they're not in the right environment that they experience. But interestingly, if they become, if the environment becomes too stiff, like with inflammation, and these are normal cells, then typically what happens is the cells will, through the focal adhesion points, there'll be a cascade of events in the cells, and they'll start to produce proteins that react to the problem at hand. So this is a very normal sort of response of cells, if they're normal cells, to things like wound healing and inflammation. But then what happens is if these are cancer cells in which the oncogenes have been turned on, then the stiffening environment turns on the oncogenes even harder. And that makes the cells pull harder and that turns the oncogenes on harder so there's a positive feedback. And people are understanding that this is the environment in which cells start to progress into a tumor at that point. And what people have discovered is that women who have dense breasts generally means they have a high density of this extracellular matrix in the glandular tissue are four to six times more likely to develop breast cancer in their lifetime. So the, the, the mechanical environment of these cells is very important and elasticity imaging can measure that and sense that. This is really an extension of something that's been used for thousands of years. It was when medicine began, the ancient Greeks discovered something called palpation. And it's used today in a clinical exam where physician will put their hands on a patient and feel for lumps. It's the first line of defense a lot of times in a lot of breast cancer cases. Um, what we do with ultrasound is to use the ultrasonic signal to, to basically do palpation but with much higher sensitivity and with some spatial resolution so that we can show physicians an image. And this image will then have the normal ultrasound image which is the structure of the, of the uh, breast tissue we can turn on a Doppler and we can look at blood flow techniques and then we apply the elasticity imaging technique in perfect registration and that shows us the stiffness. It turns out that uh, if you have a malignancy versus a, a benign tumor, the malignancy will, will extend much larger than what you see in the ultrasound image or on a mammogram. And that extension is the desmoplastic reaction that that tells the physician that there is something extra going on. It could be a malignancy. Uh, if, if it's a benign condition, they're about the same size. So that's a really nice clinical feature that people use. The other thing that we're, we're uh, beginning to look at, which we th we're very excited about, is can we track the progress of tumor while it's being treated? Mm -hmm. And we think this is another area. And we've just begun a pro um, 
a, a joint project with the people uh, across the street at Provena in the cancer center there, working with some pathologists and radiation uh, physicists to, to look at some of our cell structures and, and decide whether uh, we can track the progress of radiation therapy using this method. Well, from, from a patient's point of view, uh, I think patients would, would like this procedure quite a bit because uh, we can use normal ultrasound equipment uh, and we don't have to change really the way, from a patient's point of view, it appears that we're scanning the tissue. Um, it's, we, we do, the way we've been using it in a clinical environment is a patient has an abnormality, a physician has decided that they should have a biopsy. So they use ultrasound generally to, to do the needle biopsy. And while they're doing that procedure, we just acquire data for our methods. So it's low cost. Uh, there's not a brand new technology that's required. It's mostly how to use ultrasound in new ways that actually makes it more effective.